Today we're going to be taking a look at the Mixed Tile Blade 3, a new SBC which was successfully crowdfunded on CrowdSupply in June. It's based on the Rockchip RK3588 SoC. I've tested a couple of boards that run this SoC recently, but this one has a trick up its sleeve. It's designed to be stackable to make up compact clusters with a 4-lane PCI Express Gen 3 interface between each board in the cluster. From the crowd supply page, the Blade 3 with 4 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage sells for $229, and the 16 gig version with 128 gigs of storage sells for $369. This does include a large passive heatsink pre-installed, but even with the included storage as well, it's on the upper end for SPCs with this processor. The Blade 3 is in a Pico ITX form factor, with the majority of its I.O. ports on one side. Taking a look around the board, the processor is actually on the bottom underneath the large aluminium passive heatsink. With it removed, in the centre we've got the Rockchip RK3588 processor. This is an 8-core 64-bit processor that consists of a 4-core Cortex-A76 processor running at 2.4GHz and a 4-core Cortex-A55 processor running at 1.8GHz. In addition to this, it's got an ARM Mali G610 GPU. Alongside the processor are the RAM chips. The Blade 3 supports up to 32 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM, and above the processor is up to 256 gigs of eMMC storage. This is the version with 16 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. Also on the bottom of the board is a CSI camera port. On the top of the board, we've got the main I.O. on one side. From left to right, this includes dual 2.5 gig Ethernet ports, then two HDMI ports. The top one is an HDMI 2.1 output which supports 8K60 or 4K120. And the bottom one is an HDMI 2.0 input which supports up to 4K60. Alongside those are dual USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C ports, which also each support DisplayPort 1.4. The port on the right also supports power delivery 2.0 at up to 20 volts and 3 amps. Behind the ports is a microSD card slot, and next to that is a mini PCI Express slot which supports PCI Express Gen 2.1. Alongside the mini PCI Express slot is a 30-pin GPIO header. This has a range of digital pins, I2C, SPR, USB 2.0, UART and I2S support. Next to that is this 4-lane PCI Express Gen 3 interface in a U.2 port. This is the interface that makes the Blade 3 into a unique stackable design which would be great for building powerful clusters with low latency interfaces between the nodes. They say that you'll be able to connect up to 75 Blade 3 SBCs together in a 2U rack space on a 19-inch chassis. With 75 Blade 3s, that's up to 600 processor cores and almost 2.5 terabytes of RAM. It's worth noting that at the time of making this video, they have not released their full documentation on how this interface functions, and I haven't seen it working yet. But they say it'll use a breakout board with two SFF8643 interfaces one PCI Express A port and one PCI Express B port. You'll then chain the boards up by connecting B on the first to A on the second, and so on. They'll also be releasing a 4-node cluster box which takes advantage of this interface to build a 4-node cluster, and it's also got some integrated cooling fans. Mextile have also designed this pretty cool case for it. This protects the Blade 3 and allows you to turn it into a portable mini-computer. It's made up of two main parts which are both made from aluminium. The main housing looks like it's been machined from a single block. It's also got a ventilation fan built into it with a small air outlet on the side. The ventilation fan actually cools the case and the case acts as a heatsink to the chip. So it's a bit unconventional but we'll soon find out if it works. The case also has a built-in breakout board to convert the U.2 port into an M.2 M key port. This allows you to install the M.2 NVMe SSD as a boot or storage drive. They include some tools and an instruction sheet to install the board into the case. You don't actually use this heatsink if you install it in the case, as the case becomes the heatsink. I'm going to run my tests on the board and heatsink only, as the case is an optional accessory. I'll try the case out towards the end of the video to see how it handles the heat from the CPU. The board comes preloaded with a custom Debian 11 image, so it's ready to run right out of the box. There are a couple of other boot options. You can boot from the eMMC storage, a microSD card, 
or from SPI flash memory. These are selectable via four DIP switches alongside the GPIO header. These switches also allow you to enter mask ROM mode to reflash the firmware. I did have some stability issues with the pre-installed Debian image. Mixtile have been routinely releasing updates to the image, but it still seemed to crash every few minutes with my connected hardware, even on the latest image. So I ran the tests on the alternate Ubuntu image, booting off the microSD card rather. I'm going to test this board the same way I've tested similar SPCs. We'll first test some video playback at 1080p and then at 4K, then try running a Sysbench benchmark, and finally we'll take a look at power consumption. If we open up HTOP, we can see we have 8 processor cores listed. These are all relatively idle, and then we've got our 16 gigs of RAM. First let's try playing back a YouTube video in the default browser. We'll set the display resolution to 1080p. Then let's open up Chromium, then go to YouTube and open up Big Buck Bunny. I'll open up Stats for Nerds and we can then set the playback resolution to 1080p as well. Video playback in the window is near perfect, with only a few drop frames at the beginning. It also runs really well in full screen. Now let's step it up to 4K. I'm going to first adjust the monitor resolution to 4K, then reopen Chromium and Big Buck Bunny. This time we'll set the playback resolution to 4K as well. In 4K, playback starts off pretty well. We dropped a few frames in the beginning, but after a few seconds of playback it's also near perfect. Opening up to full screen, it still handles playback really well. After about 4 minutes of playback, we've only lost a total of 178 frames, which is barely noticeable. If we open up HTOP, we can see we add around 20-30% CPU utilization only on the first 4 cores. This is relatively low compared to the other RK3588 boards I've tested. Mextile have not released an Android image for the Blade 3, although they do say that this is in progress and will eventually be released. This will likely be the best for 4K video playback performance when it's available. Next let's do a comparison with the ROC5 Model B and Orange Pi 5 Plus by running the Sysbench CPU benchmark. After 10 seconds we've processed a little under 5400 events per second and we get a total score of 54004. For comparison, over three consecutive tests, the ROC 5B managed an average of 53,642. The Cardass Edge 2 managed an average of 51,568. And the Orange Pi 5 Plus managed an average of 53,436. The Mixtile Blade 3 managed an average of 54,025. This is slightly higher than the other boards, but could be because of the different OS being run, as all of the others were tested on Debian. Out of interest, I tried the test on Ambien as well. I got slightly lower results, the average being around 53,495. So the results are definitely operating system dependent. Performance wise, the Blade 3 is roughly on par or even slightly better than the ROC5 Model B and Orange Pi 5 Plus. This is to be expected since they're running the same processor and similar hardware. It's not a difference you'd notice through day to day use. Thermally, the included heatsink does a fairly good job at keeping the Blade 3 passively cool. After playing back 4K video for around 15 minutes, the Blade 3 CPU was at a little over 65 degrees, and the surface temperature of the Blade 3 was at 52 degrees. I then tried playing back 4K video for around 20 minutes in the case, and although the case does get quite warm, the CPU temperature was a bit lower than with the passive heatsink. The CPU stabilized at around 55 degrees, and the surface of the top of the case at 30 degrees, with the bottom at 40 degrees. 
It's worth mentioning that the room was at about 15 degrees for these tests, which is quite cold. The case is nice and compact and protects the Blade 3 well, but the included fan is really loud. If you're not using their operating system, then the fan just runs at full speed continuously, which is really noisy on a desk. Lastly, let's take a look at power consumption. To measure the Blade 3's power consumption, I used a meter on my power bank that supports power delivery. This showed that the Blade 3 was actually running on power delivery, running at 15 volts. It runs at about 4.5 watts when idle, and this goes up to around 7 to 7.5 watts when loaded. Overall, I think that while the Blade 3 is expensive, they have used good quality components. They've used Micron RAM chips and SanDisk flash storage. Unfortunately, as with most of these boards, the software lets it down. At least this is possible to work on and fix, and hopefully Mixtile will dedicate their attention to getting a stable release of Debian out. There are two other things that I found a bit annoying. The first was not having a standard USB Type-A port, so you have to use a dongle to plug in a mouse or keyboard. The USB-C ports are also a little bit too close together to use a compact dongle. If you squeeze one in, it puts pressure on the power cable alongside it so it's better to use one with the lead. The second is the location of the microSD card slot. It's positioned so that the card has to be inserted from the inside, and the surrounding ports and surface mount components make it difficult to actually get your fingers onto it to plug it in or remove it. I'd like to finish off with the reminder that crowdfunded projects generally carry some level of risk, and there is no guarantee that the final product will live up to the project's expectations. Mextile look like they have a capable team, and they have a track record in electronics manufacturing. They've also obviously completed their pre-production run, which has allowed me to have one. But that isn't to say that this product isn't without risk. It's not yet a fully-fledged retail product. That said, I definitely look forward to seeing what its clustering capabilities look like in the future. Let me know what you think of the Mextile Blade 3 in the comment section below, and if there's anything you'd like to see me test on it. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics, projects, tutorials and reviews.